a Buffy the Vampire Slayer fan, also. Her favorite episode was the musical episode called Bunnies, Bunnies, Lots of Bunnies. Evaluating Walter Pilger's speech, Andy Anderson. Walter, I am so glad you gave your icebreaker. I've been waiting and waiting to get to know you. You've been a member of our club. You've done functionary roles. We've watched you become more comfortable with the way things work, and now we know you a little bit better. The purpose of an icebreaker, it's been a long time since I've heard an icebreaker, actually. I was reflecting upon that. The purpose of an icebreaker is to begin speaking before an audience. Also, to identify your strengths and discover areas for improvement. And obviously, Walter, you did a great job speaking in front of an audience today. Congratulations. Thank you. you actually have a lot of strengths, and you're going to be a fabulous speaker. You have lovely word pictures. You use language and adjectives and descriptive words so effectively to bring us into not only the real zoo, but your imaginary world, the green zoo. When you said, talked about the trolley through the woods and the, the gate of the zoo just being magical. I could I was almost I was there with you and you described it so beautifully and you came out and it opened up. So those those kinds of word pictures really engage your audience and bring us along on the ride. You also had some great transitions. You said to transition from your introduction to the green zoo, I couldn't stay at the zoo all of the time. So I made an imaginary zoo at home. And your details were fabulous. You had a good use of notes, but Walter actually gave me his notes, and it really is just an outline. What I noticed, and this kind of transitions into a suggestion for improvement, is you had incredible eye contact when you were talking to us, which was when you were filling in the details. So maybe even less of an outline for yourself, because you knew exactly what you were talking about. And I think there were a couple of times that your notes might have hobbled you and made you stumble, whereas when you spoke to us, you were, you were effortless. And it was a wonderful thing to see. I really enjoyed seeing it. But you did make good use of your notes. You weren't tied to them. You looked up. You did make eye contact, and that's fabulous, especially for an icebreaker. So you've got the eye contact thing down when you're not tying yourself to a note. Something I'd love to do is tie myself to notes. So, Some suggestions for improvement. We thank you. So to turn it over at the end of your speech, Madam Toastmaster, because we want to thank you for speaking. And don't forget to shake, because leaving the lectern on a company can lead to the trouble. <laughs> also, I wanted to suggest that you practice your speech with the extras, because I'm sure you practiced it as it was here. But I think you're going to be a speaker who does an outline, gets up here, and then fills in the blanks. You might want to practice it several times in front of a mirror while you're driving to fill in those blanks with the details so you can get a feel for how long it's going to take you. Because it was to be a four to six minute speech, and it was a seven and a half minute speech. Had it been a five to seven, you would have been fine. There's no way I'm still in green. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, it's the longest 30 seconds of my life. My favorite thing was something that's kind of an advanced method. You had peanuts. And you threw them. I loved it. It was very um, carnival, hawker, you know guy throwing and while I think people could have used a little more decorum in the crinkling of bags, that was certainly not your fault. <clears throat> and uh, it was a fabulous addition. I loved how you said that you were fascinated with watching the elephants eat and I think that was my favorite detail of your speech. So Walter, fabulous speech. So look forward to your next one and you look good up here. Thank Madam Toastmaster.